Fastest in the S-Class was Taito Oshira, who despite setting the 10th fastest time overall in the Evo 6, was down in fourth after losing time on the previous stages. Keith lost time and slipped behind Chana into ninth overall, but still held a comfortable lead in the S-Class. Karen Patel was having a good run in his Impreza and was lying second overall in the S-Class behind Keith. Again fastest in the F2 class was Gurmit Thethi, as he extended his lead, beating Varese by over 30 seconds on the stage. Uh, it's quite uh, bumpy. There's a lot of tree stumps or tree roots which are coming out which are not visible before. So you've really got to be... Navigator has got to be 10 steps sharper than the driver here. It's, it's, it's very technical. The crews then returned to the Miga estate for the second run through the spectator stage before another visit to the service park. It had been two short stages, but they had certainly taken their toll on the field. Let's pick up again with the action as the cars come through the rerun of the tattoo stage. Crews were expected to be quicker after the morning run had marked out the junctions and navigators had adjusted their notes. Chaga still held a good lead as the crews lined up at the start of the stage. However, if Tundo repeated his earlier performance, then he could realistically expect to lose out to the Proton driver. But despite attacking from the outset, his rally would come to an end when his transmission shouted enough. The stages had been especially hard on gearboxes with the constant changes. His comfortable lead in the championship was slipping away. Tundo, meanwhile, had overhauled Duncan in the previous stage and was once again fastest, beating Duncan by 27 seconds. In his first event behind the wheel of the Proton S2000, he was top of the pile. Duncan could sadly not match the Proton on this tight stage. He was once again second overall following Chaga's retirement, but was on course to pick up his first points of the season. Quentin Mitchell went third fastest despite rolling on the section. The car landed back on its wheels and he was able to continue without losing any time. Now third overall, he was just 13 seconds behind Duncan, proving he was still a driver worth backing. Best of the rest was Jaspreet Chatty, who moved up into fourth overall, though by now almost two minutes down on Mitchell. For fifth overall, Peter Horsey went quicker than Onka Rai and now trailed his Evo X rival by just five seconds in the battle. Rai lost 27 seconds to Horsey on the stage but remained in fifth. Jasmine Chana was seventh fastest and moved up to seventh overall. Tejvir Rai continued to set top ten times as he fought his way back up the field and was rewarded with a place back inside the top ten. Stephen Wangi set the ninth fastest time but was lucky to still be running at all after a roll on the fifth stage. It meant he was now down in 17th and Keith rounded out the top 10, but was once again quickest in the S-Class to extend his lead there. He was lying eighth overall and on cue for another great result. Washira might have lost ground to Keith on this stage, but he was up to ninth overall on his first ever event and second in class. Karen Patel was now third in class and up to 11th overall, another new face on the circuit that would add spice to the S-Class Championship. Dennis Mwenda found himself in the lead as his rivals fell by the wayside and with a three and a half minute lead over Varese, he could afford to relax and look after his car. Varese, on the other hand, could only hope that Mwenda hit problems, but second overall would be a good points haul for him. Nishal Shah was again driving his own rally, but the Kisumu driver found himself in third in the F2 class, 21 minutes behind Varese. 
With the crews heading back to Marriott for the rerun of the short 7km stage, Peter Horsey opened up the Evo X and went fastest, beating the Proton by two seconds. Tundo was second fastest and pulled a further five seconds on Duncan to extend his rally lead to 40 seconds. In the top three for the first time, Jassy Chatty held a second over Duncan. Duncan struggled to match the speed of the Proton, but set an identical time to Quentin Mitchell, completing the stage in just three minutes and 51 seconds. Mitchell was in a well-deserved podium position now, but it was 28 seconds behind Duncan overall. Things weren't looking so good for Onka Rai, whose centre diff was slipping. All he could hope for was to make it to the finish. Karen Patel set his first fastest time in the S-Class, but still trailed Keith and Washira by more than three minutes. The final stage of the day was the third run through the spectator stage, where the crowds had gathered in their thousands to enjoy the action. All eyes were focused on Tundo. The new Proton had generated a buzz and he didn't disappoint, going fastest to secure a maiden victory and the first for an S2000 car on Kenyan soil. So, no, I'm chuffed. I'm really happy that the Proton uh, feels like it's an awesome car to drive, but uh, yeah, it's good fun. A lot more to do to it. Duncan was second fastest to cement second overall, picking up his first points of the season and with five events remaining, he was still in the fight. Thank you. Sour, thanks. Mitchell was just two seconds slower and once again finished on the podium, sending a message out to any potential sponsors that he is a driver to contend with and we hope to see him back again in the Kuru. I don't know, I think we're lying second or third or something. Not a bad day out for a privateer. Thanks. Jazzy Chatty had struggled with an underpowered car all weekend, but held on to fourth to score valuable points after retiring in Machacos. Yeah, time-wise we're a bit behind, but uh, I'm pleased with the pace and uh, enjoyed it. Stephen Mwangi set the fifth fastest time to the delight of the crowds, but finished 15th overall in his N12. Peter Horsey had struggled to find his pace for much of the rally and will be hoping to get more out of the car on the next event, but fifth overall was a good result. Onko Rai's luck eventually did run out when his diff finally failed at the start of the stage and he was left stranded, so close to the end. This allowed Jasmine Channa, who had stayed out of trouble, to be rewarded with six overall. Seventh for Alistair Keith put him back in charge of the S-Class Championship. He had increased his pace where it mattered and shown that he is the man to beat this season. Overall, we've done quite well, we think. Uh, we've had a few problems on the last stage. Um, well, we've got problems with our clutch at the moment, but uh, OK, not bad. Ninth was a fantastic result for Washira, competing in his first event behind the wheel of the Evo 6. The S-Class has some new faces that will make the championship exciting in its remaining rounds. Karen Patel rounded out the top ten and sealed a podium position for himself in his first event with the older Impreza. Just Zerbier finished 11th on an event that did not suit his tornado at all. He'll be back in competition on the next cross-country event. Leonardo Varese inherited the F2 win when Dennis Mwenda hit trouble and now heads up the championship after Kana failed to score points. Mwenda's luck had run out when his rear suspension broke and he limped out of the stage but still finished second in his class to keep his title defence alive. Nishal Shah was the only other F2 finisher and took a well-deserved podium and his first points of the season. The event had run without a hitch. Safety on the stages was at the highest level and despite the route being rough in places, the event had been a good challenge for all competitors.
The podium prize giving was held near the Parc Fermé at Migar Estate before a glitzy prize giving ceremony later in the evening at the National Museum. All eyes were focused on the podium as the Proton S2000 arrived. Tundo had taken an emphatic victory and is likely to get stronger as he gets used to his new car. The win, alongside the failure to finish by Chaga, puts him back at the head of the title race. As the championship moves to home soil for the next round, it'll be interesting to see how the car performs on more open roads. A quick look at the tables, with Tundo leading the overall championship 20 points ahead of Chaga, whilst Jasmine Chana now moves into third after Rajbir Rai failed to score. Keith pulls clear with a big margin to lead the S-Class Championship, with new faces scoring points for the first time. Leonardo Varese now heads up the F2 title, whilst Kana and Thethi failed to score, meaning defending champion Dennis Mwenda moves back into third, as a string of bad luck hampers his title defence. Round four takes the crews upcountry to Nakuru and returns to some of Kenya's famous rally stages around the Kerio Valley. The terrain will once again change with more open roads, steep climbs and descents, and high ambient temperatures on the floor of the Great Rift Valley. We'll see you there.